bienvenidos a la Daily Hustle. Soy Enrique Barnes y presidente de esa mejor cerveza. No abate por No Filter Network. Miguelito San Diego, not with us today. Will the Thrill, not with us today. And by the way, it is his 60th birthday. Although not in our presence, we come on here each and every single morning, regardless, birthdays, no birthdays, doesn't matter to us. We properly salute our boys and, of course, each and every one of you. Yes, 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 yes! Woo! Look out for that mic there. Remember this, folks? When we are juiceful, we are useful, and when we are juiceless, we are fucking useless. A very pleasant good morning to you on the 13th day of March 2024. Our title sponsor, Bet Online. It continues to be your number one source for all of your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. With up to the minute odds, stats, and trends, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting, contests, and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform. Anytime from your desktop or mobile device. Head to Bet Online today to become part of the team. And remember to use the promo code BELIEVE. Capital B L E A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online. The game starts here. And as you can see, I'm pretty sure that, hold on a second, that QR code right up there, uh, pimping KT Tate will take you to the site, get you guys all taped up. KT Tape is uh, very simple. You put it on, it lifts the skin off of the body, increasing the blood flow, decreasing the inflammation, and many times, if not all the time, alleviates pain kt tape deflaming muscles since his creation and then last and certainly not least we got verge try verge.com is where you want to go ltp 10 will get you a 10 percent discount on all these products this is ginger honey cannabis goodness wrapped up into one tiny little shot that'll set you free for the entire day so on that note cheers Mm. does wonders for the throat. I mean, it is exceptional. Really, really some. My personal favorite is the ginger honey. There is, it is one of the best things. I'm not sure if I've ever taken a better shot. I get some really good tequila. That Avion 44 Extra Aneo I had last night, Toasting Thrill, was pretty delicious. But this Verge... Uh, ginger honey is a close second. Okay, we got, I don't know, about 20 minutes here this morning. And, you know, first and foremost, I said this last night, but I just want to salute my partner in crime. Will Clark was a hero to me growing up. He was inspiration for... My baseball career, I wore number 22 because of him and had the opportunity to meet him when I was 13 years old, walking the streets of New Orleans. And he was just awesome. It was like, what's up, kid? And I was during the Super Bowl or during that Super Bowl week before the Niners slaughtered the Broncos, 55-10. But obviously, it was just... Uh, hero to me in so many different ways and huge inspiration. Well, I then went on to play in the big leagues myself, 11 seasons. And while I was with the Arizona Diamondbacks, I had the opportunity to meet Thrill as he was a special instructor. And we hit it off right away because obviously I wasn't shy about telling him, look, dude, I grew up in the Bay Area, huge Giants fan, huge Thrill fan. But then went on to tell him 
obviously, about the encounter that we had when I was 13 on Bourbon Street, drinking my first hurricane. And from there, we actually went out and had sushi up at Raw and randomly ran into Jim Tomey. Just an incredible experience to sit there with two legends of the game, two Hall of Famers in my mind, regardless of what they want to do with Thrill. It doesn't matter. Just a fucking Hall of Famer. And Jim Tomey had an opportunity to work with him at MLB Network, one of the nicest guys I've ever met in the game, uh, hugely underrated too. I mean, he's just, I, I think he's such a nice guy that his prowess and what he did, 600 plus homers in his baseball career get overlooked all too often. So we kept in contact after that because it was soon after that thrill then went back to work for the Giants. Now he was working for the Diamondbacks as a special assistant, basically because Jeff Morad owned the team and that was his agent when he played. Well, we developed this relationship and would keep in loose contact until he reached out to me one day about doing an event in Reno for Pace Supply. Like, yeah, good gig. Go out there, make a little dough for a couple of days, hang out and just be a dude, hit some golf balls. We both did, did talks. Uh, it was It was awesome. And so when I saw him up on stage, I knew there was something special about him that not everybody got to experience. And what I mean by that is that if you ever have seen Thrill on TV, he at times has been relatively reserved, doesn't say a whole lot, gives a lot of the PC answers, and rightfully so, right? He works for the Giants, and he put a camera in front of his face, and he's used to doing that through the course of his playing career. So he's never really just to say unbuttoned his collar and rolled up his sleeves. And when I saw him giving that speech to the guys over at Pace Supply and rolling through the stories, I knew that this was just made for him. Well, at the time we had just started no filter network. So I reached out to him. You know, after that, I'm like, yo, bro, we got to get you on here. And however you want to do it, whenever you want to do it, it doesn't matter to me. But you need a platform to be yourself. You have so many great stories and such tremendous baseball knowledge that we could share. We could really help a lot of people out with this. And I think people just want to hear Thrill Talk. So sure enough, we started Deuces Wild. And we're a few years into this thing now, and to see it grow the way it has is, it's humbling in a lot of ways, and I think more than anything, it's just awesome content. It's content that we're able to bring with you, to you, completely unfiltered, completely raw, and so on this special day for Thrill, his 60th birthday, just want to salute him once more. Say happy birthday, partner. You, uh, you've you been an inspiration for 60 years, specifically about 40 years now for me in my life. And looking forward to the next 40, let's just say, get to the triple digits of uh, continuing to inspire people and spread the good word and the good message. So anyhow, all right. Now that we got that out of the way, all the sentimental stuff, let's get rolling we have some of the top stories here that i am looking at it's like i don't even know where to start there's so many good ones i don't know uh why not with the shit show robert f kennedy jr considering jets quarterback aaron Rodgers as a possible running mate robert f kennedy jr a candidate in the next election for the united states president recently approached New York Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers about serving as his running mate on an independent ticket. According to the New York Times, Kenny is still considering a short list of candidates, and it is not clear whether Rodgers has formally been offered the position. Kenny told the Times he and Rodgers have been talking pretty continuously for the past month. Former WWE wrestler and Minnesota Governor Jesse the Body Ventura 
is also reportedly being considered. Kennedy, the son of Senator Robert F. Kennedy and nephew of former U.S. President John F. Kennedy, initially ran as a Democrat. In October, he announced he would instead run as an independent. Rogers signed with the Jets last offseason after 18 years with the Green Bay Packers. He suffered a torn Achilles just four plays into the season against the Bills and missed the rest of the season. The 40-year-old said last week on a podcast he was hopeful he'll be able to play two or three or four more years in the NFL. Rogers had come under scrutiny off the field in recent years for comments regarding COVID-19 vaccine status and most recently for suggesting that late-night talk show Jimmy Kimball's name would appear on documents linking him to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Kimmel threatened Rogers with a court action suit, and after the comment in January, the quarterback later clarified the statement on ESPN's Pat McAfee show. I'm not calling him a pedophile, and neither should I, Rogers said. Let me make that crystal clear. I don't take any excitement or joy of anybody doing that, so don't do that in my name. Don't do that at all. Those are serious accusations meant for people who are on that list. Kenny 70. Holy shit. Kenny 70. I don't know. I mean, just because he's a son of RFK, I guess I assumed he was maybe in his 50s. Hmm. But I guess this is right. He's 70. Okay. He also expressed skepticism regarding... The COVID-19 vaccine, he has become one of the leading votes voices in the campaign to discredit their use and has said that the government is using the vaccine as a way to exert control over the population. I mean, obviously, that's clear. That and to make a fuck ton of money. Uh, quote, they bit it. They had you, that vaccine passport, every right that you have transformed into privilege contingent upon obedience to arbitrary government dictates, Kennedy said in a rally against the vaccine mandates in Washington in February. The Jets had no comment when asked by The Athletic about the report. A message for Aaron Rodgers for comment was not immediately returned. The New York Times reports that Kennedy is expected to officially name his running mate in coming weeks. All right, the question is this. Do they have a chance? No. I just don't. It, it, look, you go up against the machines. And I say the machines because there's the Democratic machine and the Republican machine. And look, the Republicans, they don't want Trump. They really don't. I mean, they've tried, tried everything in their power to get him out of there. But they can't. And so they know that there's not a candidate that they could put up there that would be better suited to take the White House back. And so this is what we get. It's Trump. Uh, Biden, on the other hand, and the Democratic Party, I I mean, the guy's in office. And as much as many people would like to see him dethroned or they would replace him with another Democratic candidate or get him not to run again, folks, that looks like he is going to run again. So in what was, I say, potentially the most head-scratching presidential election of all time in 2020, uh, and it was like, dude, we'll never see anything like this again, right? This man that appears to have some cognitive issues one way or another. Uh, and another one that is obviously out of his fucking mind. Going up against each other, we all looked around and said, how did we get to this point? Yet here we are four years later. And we're going to get the same fucking thing. So why not throw RFK and Aaron Rodgers into the mix? Sure. Who gives a shit? RFK's got the name. Rodgers has got the quirky views. I mean, no one can tell me that Rodgers has any more extreme sort of views than the man on the left or the man on the right. I'd probably vote for him. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'll cast my ballot, my independent ticket. The problem is it's not going to do anything. And my mom and I go back and forth on this all the time. We really do. And she's disgusted with the fact that I didn't vote in the last election. Just disgusting. And I'm like, 
My point is that it's not going to make a difference. Well, okay, I take that back because I did vote in the last election. And my ballot got lost. And so every one of the, you know, what does it come up every couple of years? I, I'm like, I'm never voting again. This is bullshit. This is a waste of my time. It's a waste of my effort. It's dumb. And the ballot got lost along with thousands and thousands of other Arizona ballots. I, up until recently, had a place in Scottsdale, driver's license, registered to vote, everything was in Arizona. I also felt like my vote, one way or another, would have more of an impact in Arizona because it's not just a red state or just a blue state. It's a very middle of the road state. And that's where I feel like I potentially could have an impact. Yet my absentee ballot somehow miraculously gets fucking lost. I know this is a little bit like, hey, I took my ball and went home, but frustrated to say the least. So done with that. Uh, Onward and upward here. Uh, On that note, I found this article really interesting. Which U.S. county has the highest home prices? Graphics and maps explain. Okay. As home prices continue to rise, some experts have called the housing market the least affordable in recent memories from January 2023 to December 2024. The median sale price for an existing home increased 5.1%. That's crazy considering that the interest rates have skyrocketed in the past year as well. Homes are a large investment and their prices can be used as a proxy for household wealth, according to the Washington State Office of Financial Management for the roughly two-thirds of Americans who do own homes. Really? I mean, that's a big number. Two-thirds of Americans own homes. The location is a major determinant of their home value. County-level data from the American Community Survey show median home prices from across the country. These prices in the middle of each market offer a way to compare how each market differs. The annual median sales price last year for existing homes in the U.S. was $389,000 according to data from the National Associate of Realtors. So it says, what are the most expensive housing markets in the U.S.? California was home to the most expensive county in the country. And that is, drum roll, please, hold on. Box drum roll. Santa Clara County. Shocker. Palo Alto, Los Altos Hill. I mean, it just goes on and fucking on. $1.58 million. $1.58 is your average. Like, first of all, if you're in Santa Clara County, I don't know where the fuck you're finding anything for 1.58. Nothing. I mean, maybe stuffed in a corner by the 101 somewhere. But 1.58, I mean, I haven't seen anything listed there for under three, I feel like, in years. The next one, San Mateo County. Shocker once again, 1.57 million. It's right next to Santa Clara County. This is where our house is in Half Moon Bay. This is Woodside. This is Portola Valley, Menlo Park, Redwood City. On and on and on. Sam Mattel, 1.57. Shit, man. Hmm. The third one, Marin County, right across the Golden Gate Bridge, 1.45 million. The fourth one, San Francisco County. I mean, you can't make this shit up. 1.33 million. And finally, you get to number five. We get out of this small little pocket where I've happened to live my whole life. Nantucket County, 1.31. Thank you, Nantucket. We we appreciate it. So the issue is this with the Bay Area. They have a land shortage, right? You have the peninsula. You have the coast. You have the city. Then on the other side, you got Marin. Like it's, there's just not a lot of land. And the other big issue is you have some of the highest incomes in the world. So if you take scarce land with great topography, right, it's gorgeous. And just geographically, 
one of the most desirable places to live, and you add that with crazy salaries, what you create is crazy demand. And that's apparently what you have. Okay, on the flip side, though, this is interesting. Texas leads away with the cheapest counties. The following counties have the lowest median home values in the United States. Todd County, South Dakota, ready for this? $42,940. Cochran County in Texas, $50,000 for a home. 50 k for a home. McDowell County in West Virginia, $50,000. Cottle County in Texas, $53,000. And Stonewall County in Texas, $57,000. So if you're deciding where to live, I guess, look, the only thing that keeps people in the Bay Area these days has got to be jobs. Jobs where you just have that fuck you money that you've already made and you're going to stay. But it's crazy how ridiculously overpriced that it's gotten. Okay. Uh, Question is this. Once again, where is Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery? The never-ending saga continues as MLB regular season draws near and near. Two game-changing southpaws remain unsigned, yet the reigning National League Cy Young Award winner Blake Snell and the 2023 world champion Jordan Montgomery, although both players have been linked to countless teams throughout the offseason and many have speculated that the deals with both players could happen at any moment, the pair still don't have a team. Okay, let's get to the rumors. It says the Angels are the favorites to sign Snell. Although Los Angeles Angels were always in the running to land the NL Cy Young Award winner, Blake Snell, the team has recently surged ahead as the runaway favorites. Bob Nightingale reports that Snell is now more willing to sign a short-term contract with opt-out clauses, which should be more attractive to other teams. The only drawback with the Angels seems to be Artie Moreno's willingness to approve a big name free agent purchase. Obviously, those haven't gone well for him. The Angels have been burned by free agents of the past, most notably the acquisition of former Washington Nationals third baseman Anthony Rendon. Even further back, it was Poole, CJ Wilson, Joe Blanton, Justin Upton, Zach Kozar, and Josh Hamilton, all which did not work out that well. Since 2010, the Angels have reached the playoffs only once. That's 2014, and they were promptly swept in the ALDS by the Kansas City Royals. So perhaps a big-name free agent signing are not the appropriate pass for the Angels. I get it, but look, you still have the best player in the world in Mike Trout. You got to give him somebody else. You have to. And an elite arm at the top, and if you guys have been developing – any sort of minor leaguers through the system. And I got to believe they have uh, Jack Santor, a good buddy of mine from UCLA. He's one of the minor league coaches. I'm not sure where he is this season, but just a fucking dude, man, a great baseball dude, a great baseball mind. So I, I got to believe they're doing fine in the development part department, but you got to give trout somebody else. It's got to be another big name. Give him a big arm. You could surround a lineup of dudes around Mike Trout, and they don't have to be huge names. You just need productive players that are going to give you productive at-bats. On the mound, you need arms. I I mean, it's an arms race. Arms, defense. There's a real interesting article here I read the other day all about what wins. And they were saying that it was defense versus home runs. And shockingly it was a lot more even than i thought I, the defense was great and you know several years the world series champion was the best defensive team or near the top on defense but i think you just have to remember this there were other years that it was the team that hit the most homers but the problem is once you get to the postseason the sample is so short So if you look at over the course of 162 game season, and really what you're trying to do is put yourselves in position to succeed, right? And that would be over the course of the entire season. The Dodgers have been one or two in defense every year. That's it. That's all you need to know. 
So that's where, how, and why I would always put defense at the top. Okay, as far as Jordan Montgomery, it says he's looking for a long, long, long-term deal. What? When thinking about a long-term deal, most people would consider four years a decent contract with some decent length, offering some confidence that the player will maintain a sizable role in the organization for years to come. That would be especially great, a great deal for a player entering his age 31 season, right? Well, apparently not for Jordan Montgomery. According to John Heyman of the New York Post, Montgomery is seeking a seven-year deal, which would keep him a member of the Red Sox through his age 37 season. The Red Sox, who have been linked to Montgomery all offseason, are still favorites to land the Southpaw, but Montgomery's insistence on a long-term future with the team seems to be the main reason why a deal hasn't been reached. Why? Why do you want that? It's fucking stupid. It really is. Take the short-term deal. Take the opt-outs. If you go out there and earn it, you're going to get paid more anyway. Ah, three years is long enough. I mean, it's crazy to make that long commitment because then even if it doesn't work out, Jordan Montgomery is not going to be thrilled going into year five, six, and seven if for whatever reason he can't pitch. It's just not. He's much better off going on a short-term deal. He can make almost as much money and not have to worry about What's going to happen seven years down the road? There's so much shit that changes. Take the short-term deal. Get some fucking opt-outs if you happen to be dealing whatever. It says the Yankees are still not interested in Snell after the Cole injury. Why not? Despite the York Yankees offering a deal to Snell earlier in the offseason, the team now seems uninterested in reigniting conversations with the reigning Cy Young Award winner, even after... Their own reigning Cy Young Award where Garrett Cole underwent an MRI on his throwing elbow. That's not good. The Cole news has not reignited the Yankees' one-time pursuit of free agent ace Blake Snell. Well, it should. 1,000% it should. Look, the Yankees have a legit shot to dethrone the Orioles. That's right. For those of you who don't realize that the Orioles actually won the fucking AL East last year. For the first time in a long time, the Yankees would be considered underdogs going into this season to win the AL East. Well, if they have any chance of doing such, they need an ace. They need Garrett Cole. They need Blake Snell. And you sure as hell need one of them. So if I'm the Yankees, look, you let go of the reins, the Orioles take the reins. And they're going to fucking run with it. One thing you could do, one thing, is hop back on that horse, grab the reins back, and say, here, get on the back, O's. We're riding off into the sunset once again. We're the New York fucking Yankees. Well, I don't think they have the pieces to do it. I think they're going to be good. I think Soto's going to have a monster year. But are they going to be good enough? Eh. Not without Cole, not without Snell. All right, let's go one more here. Um, this is kind of fun. The Super Bowl 59 odds update, free agent frenzy and trade market shakeup. The annual NFL shakeup has begun as teams have allowed to negotiate with free agents since Monday, March 11th, players can officially sign starting Wednesday, March 13th. So that is today at 4 p.m. Eastern. Some big names are on the move, be it through free agency or the trade market. Derek Henry is headed to the New England Patriots. Huh? I thought Derek Henry is going to Baltimore. But this is how it reads. Yeah, we'll see about that. Running back Shaquan Barkley will join the Philadelphia Eagles. That's right. While the New York Giants lost Barkley, they acquired edge Brian Burns from the Carolina Panthers. This guy's a stud. Kirk Cousins will take over for the Atlanta Falcons after a six-season stint with the Vikings. And a $180 million deal, by the way. Quarterback Russell Wilson agreed to a deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers after two seasons in Denver. And... Quarterback Baker Mayfield is staying with the Buccaneers. He got a huge contract as well. Las Vegas Raiders added 
Christian Wilkins from the Miami Dolphins and QB Gardner Minshew. I like that guy. Formerly of the Colts, the Cleveland Browns acquired Jerry Judy from the Denver Broncos. QB Mac Jones was dealt by the Patriots to the Jaguars. The list keeps growing as these are just a few of the moves that have taken place since Monday. For more news, go to USA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Football never stops. The 2025 Super Bowl odds, the favorites provided by BetMGM. You know what? We'll say it's uh, BetMGM. Yes, of course. But what about uh, our friends over at Bet Online? Here's some Bet Online odds. San Francisco 49ers, they're plus 500. Bet $100 and win 500. Those are the shortest odds. Kansas City Chiefs, plus 650. And the Baltimore. Ravens plus 900. Why would those go down? I mean, if the Ravens sign Derrick Henry, I'm, I'm not on crack, am I? Let me look up one more thing just to make sure I'm not on crack. This one article, I, I mean, I'm calling it out. I think it's wrong. Derrick Henry. Boom. Uh, news. Yeah, he's going to the Ravens. Yeah, simple as that. Uh, Two-year deal worth $16 million. So for whatever reason, it says their odds have gone down. Derrick Henry's a different runner. He's just different. This guy's built different. He runs different. He's a fucking savage. Okay, the top five contenders after that, you got the Buffalo Bills, Detroit Lions, both at plus 1,200. Cincinnati Bengals at plus 1,400. Dallas Cowboys at plus 1,600. And the Philadelphia Eagles at plus 1,600 as well. The next seven after that is the Miami Dolphins at plus 2,000. Green Bay Packers plus 2,200. Houston Texans plus 2,500. That's a great deal right there. I mean, C.J. Stroud and company, Texans can make a few moves. This is a legit Super Bowl contending team. They got to the playoffs last year with zero expectations of getting there. The Atlanta Falcons plus 3,000. Los Angeles Chargers, plus 3,000. Thank you, Jim Harbaugh. Uh, the LA Rams, plus 3,000. And the New York Jets, plus 3,000 as well. That depends, I imagine, on the status of Aaron Rodgers, a presidential running, uh, the, based on him, whether or not he's going to become the running mate RFK or not. We've already talked about that. It says the wannabes. Cleveland Browns are plus 4,000. That's awfully low. That's a team I could see somehow pulling it off, although they never have. Jacksonville Jaguars plus 4,000. Bears plus 5,000. Colts plus 5,000. Steelers plus 6,600 would be an interesting one. So they were plus 8,000, but the Russell Wilson signing brings them to plus 6,600. Still long odds. The Bucks, after locking up Baker Mayfield, sit at plus 6,600 as well. And then the long shots. The Raiders plus 8,000. The Vikings plus 8,000. The Saints plus 8,000. The Sea Chickens plus 8,000. The Cardinals plus 10,000. The Broncos plus 10,000. The Patriots plus 15,000. The Giants plus 15,000. The Titans plus 15,000. The Washington Commanders plus 15,000. And last and certainly least, the Carolina Panthers plus 25,000. So there it is. All your... Updated odds based on the action that has transpired here. All right, I got to roll. Got to take the kids to tutor. Pickleball awaits me. And a nice little run on a chilly morning in Truckee. 21 degrees when I got up this morning. Everyone have a great day. Back on the Daily Hustle. Manana and Thrill. Happy birthday, partner. Make it a great one. See ya.